Hello and welcome back to the Finance Guardian channel. You probably heard the word recession if you've been watching the news lately. Two years after a global pandemic, we started 2022 with a market correction and the news of a new recession. What a great time to be alive. On top of that, inflation has reached a new record of 8.5%. Just to illustrate how significant that is, in 2020, inflation was 1.2%. The year before that, it was 2.4%. Anything higher than 4% is already considered catastrophic, let alone 8%. Due to the massive inflation that has been happening of late, the actual value of your $100,000 has dropped to $92,000. Now, the question is, how bad will inflation get? How is it going to drag the economy into a new recession? Will it crash the stock market? And most importantly, how should you prepare for the next crisis? Today's video will answer all of these questions and many more. As as always, hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, and let's get started. First, we must consider what exactly causes a recession. A recession is simply a period of slower economic activity. We clearly went into recession during the pandemic because everyone was sitting at home. But why are we about to have another recession now that we are recovering from the pandemic? Isn't the economy supposed to be growing? The answer is pretty straightforward. Recessions occur whenever there is an imbalance between supply and demand. Think for a minute. High inflation leads to higher prices, which in turn leads to less demand. The Fed typically lowers interest rates or purchases government bonds to flood the market with cheap money to stimulate demand in these conditions. However, interest rates are already near 0% and have been for the past two years and the Fed has been buying bonds at an alarming rate since then. So that option was out of the picture. As a matter of fact, it was one of the factors that caused the high inflation in the first place. But that's not the only option available to the Fed. The other alternative would be to increase interest rates and prices would cease to rise so rapidly. However, this would come with its own risks. There will be less money flowing into the economy since companies will be unable to borrow as much money as they do now. Spending will have to be cut, resulting in increased unemployment and less demands, which will probably lower inflation, but that will likely result in a recession. Why are analysts worried about another recession? The Federal Reserve's big changes in strategy are perhaps the biggest concern among experts who see a potential recession coming. After repeatedly playing down inflation in 2021, the Fed has finally found its way to control price growth. In January, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that the central bank would reduce its $9 trillion balance sheet sometime in 2022 and begin the withdrawal of cheap money from the economy. The move set markets on the way to tighter monetary policy. These conditions put pressure on stocks everywhere, especially high-flying tech firms that thrive in such an environment. Not only did Powell raise a federal funds rate, but he also hinted that there could be as many as seven rate hikes this year. Goldman Sachs predicted that the Fed would be even more aggressive and raise rates by 50 basis points instead of just 25 basis points. And they weren't wrong. During a conference call in March, Powell stressed that the central bank must quote-unquote expeditiously raise rates so inflation expectations won't rise further. Inflation assumptions are nothing more than the belief that prices will increase in the future. They can have several effects, such as accelerating wages that exasperate the difficulty of getting inflation back into the Fed's 2% target. On the surface, the Fed's strategy appears reasonable. The CPI, or Consumer Price Index, is at a 40-year high. But some worry that after downplaying inflation, in 2021, remember quote-unquote transitory, the central bank will be too trenchant while increasing borrowing costs. According to Jason England, a portfolio manager at Janus Henderson Investors, the U.S. economy may slip into recession should the Fed tighten too much. Considering the high inflation rate, especially in oil and food, it is not difficult to imagine consumers reducing their spending to compensate. While the Fed is raising rates partly because it wants to take some spending out of the economy, growth could stagnate if consumers clam up too much. GDP and recessions. In the United States, what constitutes a recession is somewhat flexible, but two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth is the standard definition. For instance, the Great Recession lasted from December 2007 to June 2009, and resulted in a 4.3% decrease in the gross domestic product. It was among the deepest and largest recessions in modern history. The COVID-19 recession was different from other recessions in that it lasted only two months, much shorter than the standard measure. Then why was this period called a recession? It's because the National Bureau of Economic Research, an independent nonprofit organization that officially calls recessions in the United States, defines a recession as one marked by, quote, a significant decline in economic activity that is spread across the economy and that lasts for more than a few months. Despite its brief duration, NBER believed that the economic decline that accompanied the first months of the pandemic was so deep that it merited being called a recession. And though few economists are predicting negative GDP growth right now, analysts are reducing their growth forecasts. 
Due to the higher oil prices resulting from Russia's war in Ukraine, Goldman Sachs recently cut its forecast for 2022 U.S. GDP from plus 2% to 1.75%. The Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank's GDP now provides a similar outlook, and in projections released with the rate decision, Fed economists lowered their economic growth projections from plus 4% to 2.8% for the year. Watch the yield curve. The yield curve is another widely watched market indicator that has analysts very worried. Using this metric, you can compare what investors can earn by investing in short-term treasury securities versus longer-term treasury securities. In a healthy economy, investors demand higher yields on longer-term debt to make up for the longer-term risks they take on. When the difference between these two yields narrows due to investors' demand for higher yields on shorter-term debts, that could signal the beginning of tough times. This exact scenario has been reflected in the yield curve recently, suggesting that investors expect economic growth to slow. There have been convergent yields on shorter and longer-term treasury securities, prompting some comments that a recession is imminent. Should you be worried about a recession? I can't say that this has been the most enjoyable economic expansion in history. Although the S&P 500 has almost doubled from its post-pandemic lows, the current bull market is characterized by high volatility and low consumer confidence. Because of high inflation and supply chain problems, Americans are not feeling optimistic about their finances. According to the latest Forbes advisor Ipsos survey, people still seem to be stuck in the COVID-19 malaise that has defined the last two years. Meanwhile, housing sales are on the decline due to higher financing costs, and there is a shortage of available homes in the market. This trend may augment the beginning of a recession if it worsens. At the March FOMC meeting, Powell said, quote, In my view, the probability of a recession within the next year is not particularly elevated. He pointed to strong consumer spending, a robust labor market, and healthy household finances. Keeping a perspective can be challenging, but it generally is the best medicine. Now, the big question is, how should you prepare for the next recession? The answer is a bit complicated because recessions aren't the same everywhere and the future is inherently unpredictable. In the first place, we do not know when supply chain issues will be resolved, so we do not know when inflation will be fixed. Secondly, we do not know how the Fed will react. By how many points will they raise interest rates and will the pandemic be over by the end of the year? But having cash is extremely helpful because because during recessions, a lot of businesses suffer and many of them end up bankrupt. Recessions offer a unique opportunity to get a great deal. I'm not saying you should sell your stocks, nor am I telling you to do anything. This isn't financial advice, by the way. But truth be told, a recession does not necessarily mean bad news for the stock market. As I mentioned earlier, a recession is a two consecutive quarterly decline in the economy as measured in GDP. However, the economy is not really the stock market. Things may not be as bad as we might expect, but only time will tell. If, for example, you had invested in an S&P 500 index fund at the worst possible time in 2007, when the markets peaked just before the financial crisis began, you would still have achieved an average annualized return of 8.4% for for the last 13 years. Historical data shows that long-term investors always win regardless of how bad the crisis is. And that's all the time that we have today, folks. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button. If you're new around here, welcome, and please do subscribe to our channel to remain updated about all of our future videos. We'll see you next time.